Hello, and welcome to NextStar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Apex Workbook. This video covers Chapter 2, Tutorial 6, Comments, Case Sensitivity, Collections, and Loops. In this lesson, we're going to build upon the previous tutorial by exploring some more of the fundamental constructs of the Apex language. To begin, go ahead and log into your Salesforce development environment and then open up your developer console. First item we're going to talk about are comments. Comments are lines of text that you can embed within your source code to help explain and give context to your code. Comments do not execute like the other lines of code. They're just there to make your code easier to understand and maintainable. An example of a comment would look like this. Here you can see a system debug statement like we've used in previous tutorials. And then here is a comment. Comments can be created using two different methods. The double forward slash will make a single line comment like this. And then a forward slash star will allow you to create a large block of comment text. And then a star forward slash will close it. So any text I add within those two characters will be interpreted as a comment. So if I execute this, all we will see is our debug statement and nothing more. So that's an example of a comment. The next item to discuss is case sensitivity. Unlike Java, Apex is case insensitive. That means in Apex code, any methods, class names, variable names, or keywords can be written with regardless of case. To demonstrate that, I'm going to show you this code snippet here. In previous exercises, I've used this kind of syntax right here. Capital system, lowercase today. But because Apex is case insensitive, you could capitalize, you could choose to capitalize or not capitalize any characters in these statements. So if I execute this, we'll notice that all three debug statements contain the date and time currently. Apex does not care about case sensitivity. Although it is not a fundamental requirement of the language, having a particular scheme to capitalization in your code will help make things a little bit easier to read. So even though you don't have to regard what case you make variable names and method names, it may make sense to keep things consistent. The next thing we're going to talk about are lists. Apex has a list collection type that can hold an ordered collection of objects. You can hold a collection of primitives like strings or integers, or you can hold more complicated objects like classes or built-in Salesforce objects. You typically use a list when you want to store a set of values that can be accessed with an index or that you would like to sort. I'm going to create an example list to show you what that looks like. So this right here, I'm creating a new list of integers named my list, and then we're going to go ahead and instantiate it. Lists do have some methods associated with them to get some information, such as the size method. We would use this following snippet of code to see the size of my list. Go ahead and execute that. And there we see the length of that list is zero because there's no elements. I just initialized it. So now arrays in Apex are synonymous with lists. So you would use a list anywhere you would use an array. However, Apex does provide some array-like syntax for people that are more familiar with using arrays than lists. 
So something like this. This would let us declare the same thing. This does the same thing as this. It just does it with array syntax, which if you're familiar with that from other languages, that, that'll look recognizable right away. You can also define the list variable and initialize it at the same time, like this. In this example, I'm creating a new list of strings, and right after I initialize it, I'm priming it with the strings 1 and 2. You can add elements to any list by using the add method. So I'm going to put back that list, and I'm going to demonstrate this. So with this method, my list.add, we're adding the value 101 to our list of integers. If you're familiar with array syntax, you can also edit lists in this way. You can access an element in the list by index using array syntax, and you can also edit them the same way by using those brackets and setting values. So I'm going to do kind of a, a larger example of using lists. Let's go ahead and put this. So in this example, we're going to create a new list of integers using array syntax. We're going to add the value 10 using the add method. Then we're going to read that out, that value of 10 out into the integer i. Then we're also going to read that value out using the get method and the variable j. And then we're going to write those results to the debug log. Let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see both values are 10. Even though we used the methods and the array syntax to talk to this list, we've got the same result either way. So that's kind of a simple introduction to arrays and lists in Apex. Next we're going to talk about loops. Loops allow you to control the flow of your program using conditional statements and repeating blocks of code multiple times until conditions are met. First kind of loop we're going to demonstrate is the do while loop. That looks something like this. Now in this snippet of code, we're creating an integer called count, setting it to one, and then within the do while loop, we're writing the contents of count to the debug log and we're incrementing count by one. And what the do while loop is telling it to do is it enters this do. It'll perform these actions, and then while this condition is true, it will repeatedly cycle through this block of code. So when I run this, I should see the numbers 1 through 10 in the debug log. So let's run that. There we go, 1 through 10. So that's a do while loop. A while loop is very similar, except the evaluation of the condition comes before the loop. So in this case, we're initializing count, printing count, and incrementing count. But before we do this even once, we have to check and see that count is less than 11. So if I do this, this will give me the same result as before. 1 through 10. Now the like I said before, the only real distinction between while and do while is the do while loop will perform this chunk of code the first time regardless of what count is set to. But a while loop has to make sure the condition is true before running this code at all. The last type of loop we're going to talk about is a for loop. For loop looks something like this. Now this is going to give us a similar result to our do and do while loops but the definition of the loop looks much different. Within the definition of a for loop, you'll see the word for, and we're declaring an integer i, setting that equal to 1. That's the initial condition. Then we're setting the expression here, i is less than or equal to 10, and then we're incrementing i by 1 with every iteration of the loop. So this section happens first to establish which variable will be evaluated with each occurrence of the loop. And this is the expression that needs to remain true for the loop to continue. And then this is the operation to be performed on the variable after each execution of the loop. So if I run this, we should see a very similar 
1 through 10 in the debug log. And there you go. Now that's a very basic kind of for loop. We can also do a completely different kind of for loop. And let's show that in the next, next example. Now we're starting this example out by declaring a list of integers that contain 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So all the multiples of 10 between 10 and 100. The for loop definition is declaring a variable i as an integer and specifying that using the variable i it is to iterate over the set of my ints. It will print this debug statement. And execute that and we should see all the members. There we go. 10 to 100. We're going to talk about other kinds of loops we can use in Apex, but that's not until future lessons. Lastly, we're going to talk about sets and maps. At first glance, a set may look a lot like a list, but it's actually very different. A set is an unordered collection of objects that doesn't contain any duplicate values. So you would use a set when you want to keep a collection of objects but you don't care about the order and you only care about unique instances of those objects. And I have an example here showing how a set would work. So in this example, we're creating a new set of strings, we're calling that S, and we're initializing that set with the characters A, B, and C. Now, using the add method, much like a list, we're going to attempt to add C to the set. Now, since it's already a member, nothing's going to happen, but then we are going to go ahead and add D as well, and that will increase the size of the set from three to four. And lastly, we're going to do a method. We're going to use the contains method to see if S contains the letter B, and if it does, we're going to have it write this message along with the size of the set. So we're going to go ahead and execute that, and we expect to see that message in the if statement. There we go. I contain B and I have size 4. That's exactly what we're expecting. And that shows that sets only store unique objects and not duplicates. Maps are a different kind of collection. Maps are collections of key value pairs where the keys are primitive data types and the values can be either primitives or objects. I like to think of maps as being lists that you can create your own indexes for. For example, here we're going to create a new map with integer keys and string values called employee addresses. So we're going to create and then we're going to instantiate it. In the map, we're going to put a record with number one as the key and 123 Sunny Drive, San Francisco, California as the value. And then likewise, we're going to put another record number two, 456 Dark Drive, San Francisco, California. So we've got two records in this map where we've specified the key and the value. Then what that allows us to do is by getting based on the key, we can get the entire value. This can be really useful for creating your own data structures within your Apex code to handle more complicated relationships between data sets. Lastly, a lot like indexes and array syntax, maps have another kind of shortcut syntax that look like this, where you can declare a new map. In this case, this is a map with string keys and string values. And then when you declare it, you can specify the key and the value like this. And that brings us to the end of our video on comments, case sensitivity, collections, and loops. In our next video, we'll cover Chapter 2, Tutorial 7, Classes, Interfaces, and Properties. Thank you for joining us. For more great content, click to subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you.